We are the crew with no name. But um, uh, today we have someone new joining our game. Uh, we have Toby. Hello, April. What's the name? Wait. Uh, so, um, a quick few announcements. Uh, uh, my, uh, te I've, I'm having technical issues, so I won't be uh, uploading any videos outside of streams for a while until I get some internet fixed. Um, other than that, do you guys have any announcements? All right. Okay, then I will give a, uh, since we're in the sixth session, I'm going to, for Toby, I'm going to give a, uh, a brief, uh, and for new people watching, uh, a brief overview of what's happened so far and what's the setting going on. Uh, we are in the world of Krim, and where the gods walk the earth, or Krim. Uh, years ago, the high gods Paladine, the high god of the light, and Takesis, the queen of darkness, uh, uh, Paladine fell out of power and Takesis uh, was killed. But after that, the gods uh, of light and darkness waged war, and this was known as the Chaos Years. However, under mysterious circumstances, after the chaos years, uh, the uh, the high gods were returned to power. Takis is resurrected, and Paladine was uh, restored to power. And these are called the years of order. No one knows how it happened, or why it happened. A few years later, during this war, uh, we have the. Uh, people that live on Kryn fighting the war for the gods in this holy war. Uh, we have uh, um, three adventurers that were sent to uh, hired by the Knights of Slamia to retrieve an, an item that can potentially change the war. They later found out that this item was called something called the Dragon Orb, which has the power to take control of all the chromatic dragons if used properly. So, on this quest, they found out uh, uh, that there was a member of Kisa's army, uh, a member of the Dragon High Lords, which represents each ruler of the dragon type, Chromat, the Black Dragon High Lord, the Lord of the Marsh, known as Aranus, is also after the war. But here's the weird thing. He's not seeking it for its power, but for other abilities, like he wants to ask it a question. But each... Uh, but each uh, member of the team has received dreams and premonitions that this question will bring doom upon Kryn. So it's a mystery in itself. We also learned that uh, uh, that one of the members has offended Lord Soft by arresting whose domain is the undead, the uh, the dark elves, not to be confused with your drow, and uh, the uh, Hags. So they went and had this huge scuffle with this hag, and they eventually defeated him recently, only to sure. be chased down by a, another minion of Lord Soft, a Death Knight. Which, uh, during the chase, uh, they managed to all escape into the city, but uh, one of the party members was severely injured. Uh, so, and, uh, and as such, uh, uh, another surprising thing happened. The way magic works in this world, magic works in this world is it is drawn from deities for power. So, however, one of the deities, uh, a deity of the neutrality deities, uh, abandoned, uh, one of our players and they lost all their druid powers. Doesn't know why. So, and that's uh, where our session is at, and do uh, you guys want to introduce your characters? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're first in the morning.
want to be like Gandalf. Yeah, I am Dwarag Darhargar. I am a, a fighter for the Knights of Salonia. Uh, I am I am um, actually now um, a cavalier, uh, as aspiring to someday become a dragon rider, the first dwarven dragon rider in centuries, if ever. What? Would you have to get on a pseudo dragon? Would that be large enough for you? <laughs> or small enough, I can say. <laughs> so, so I am the disgruntled druid who has lost his powers and has now become a bit of a barbarian too. So, I'm in, currently in town looking for a good hefty hammer or something to well, rival that of my dwarven friend here. But my name is Orion Wormtongue. I have a small grudge against a god right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Gorstag, a human cleric. Quite a beef and beefy and tall bloke. Quite tall, quite wide. Very, very white blonde hair, very pale skin, and ice blue eyes. More of a bashy sort of cleric than a book smart cleric. It may have been why he got kicked out of his temple, but he'd never tell you that. So, oh, another, uh, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, and I always do this every session, there's always one detail I forget to mention. Uh, in the setting, uh, the good dragons have not been seen even though this is a war between gods and um, so all the metallic dragons have not been seen, but the chromatics have been seen. No one knows why they haven't come or for whatever reason uh, why they showed up. Oh, and other than that, that's it. They're like, let Kryn burn! Burn, Kryn, burn! burn. Um, so we're going to start off with the session in the uh, Actually, in under Sad Tidings, the infirmary where Doreg was injured by a uh, death knight, like I said earlier, I didn't say it was Doreg, but he got basically decided to taunt the death knight. And uh, he basically nearly sucked the life out of him. And uh, he had enough strength to taunt him again. But <laughs> yes, I used my inspiration to taunt him a second time. Yeah, and so he, uh, you find, uh, so Gore, uh, was it uh, Gore, Gore Gore Stack. Stack. Yeah. Ah, oh, crud. Can I invest in them all? this mouse. Anyways, uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, you've been being kind of a cleric uh, that's been kicked out of the temple. You kind of travel from place to place as a traveling healer. But strangely enough, you've been appointed to a job of healing by the Knights of Slamnia because none of the temple healers are doing any good, so they're taking a chance on any healer they can find. Okay. So they uh, bring you into this huge building in the city. It's pretty big. And uh, what you do know is um, the Knights of Slania are split into three orders. The lowest rank is the Knights of the Crown. The middle rank is the Knights of the Sword. The highest rank is the Knights of the Rose. Knights of Rose were sent to protect the capital. The roads are being watched by the Knights of Sword, and the Knights of the Crown are in the cities preparing for the going into the front lines for war. Because the 
in the first session, the capital was attacked by all five dragon pie lords for a raid. And everybody's up in arms. So the Knights of the Crown have taken you through, uh, for reasons you don't understand yet, to uh, on what they believe the orders of the Grand Master of the Knights of Somnia has asked for. And they promised to pay you 500 gold. To, uh, yeah, it's a lot of trouble. Man. To if you can uh, heal someone for them, and you're brought into this infirmary with all these sick people, injured from travelers, refugees, and so forth. And you see two doors beside a bed, a woman. Um, uh, a, uh, a younger man, a young woman and a young man, both knights of the crown, uh, the, it's going to be this, uh, white token here and over here, but, uh, he has, uh, short crop brown hair, two swords at his side, and the woman has a, like a, short sword, it's kind of thin blade, and so forth, good for balance. And you also notice that the, with a, in the full armor of Knights of the Rose and uh, an old man with long, long hair, a long mustache, which is a symbol of the Knights of the Rose, they all have mustaches and they tie rings around them and so forth. And, uh, is sitting on bedside where you see a in a squire outfit a a dwarf that looks like a shriveled uh, prune. Oh, dang. Hmm. While this is happening, Orin, you are beside her. Uh, you are. Okay. Uh, you're beside yourself. It's been a few days. You're contemplating not having any powers. Well, I went down to the little weapon shop on the bottom mall, feeling this rage building inside me. Yeah. Do you also what... remember uh, something you did say at the beginning of the game about your character that you seek to know what's the evil that sleeps in the uh, ruins of truth where you grew up? True, sure, true. Sure. That still bothers me. It just keeps my family awake or disappearing at night. So you are contemplating by yourself. How can you help them now without your powers? What can you do? What's what can you do? So, well, but as they had happened, the camera I, uh, this mysterious man to uh, the bedside, and. Uh, uh, do you guys want to say anything to him? As the uh, Grandmaster says, Is this the healer? Yes, my lord. I'll give him a curt bow. This is our most promising young squire. How's he looking as I look over him? How beaten up? How bad does he look? You can tell from the looks of him being a light cleric that he's been dealt a mass amount of necrotic damage. Hmm. So that means it's like there's a bunch of black rotted marks on him. There's a... And they... Uh, uh, they... They... Uh, they show you the marks. It's it's pretty bad. It's all over the place. He's, but he's like still clenching one fist in the air, shaking it. But it's he's kind of, so. yeah, he's alive though. But his arms a little stiff, and it feels like if you move it, you'll break it off. Okay, well I'll put a hand on his forehead, offer a little prayer, and cast cure wounds. Uh, uh, as you do that. Uh, you feel a strange familiarity come uh, to your shoulder as a woman you've come to know well, wielding a blue crystal staff, 
Which beer is in your ear? Many trials lie ahead of you, my servant. Be ready. I will still nod and acknowledge it, and I'm always ready. So as you cast Cure Wounds, uh, he, uh, uh, his, uh, you feel like it's stronger than before, as if the goddess is specifically channeling you to really heal this person. You need a little bit of chocolate. You need the chocolate to finish it up. <laughs> no, need my druid in this. As oh, you... oh, that feels that feels really, really good. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's on your forehead, but um, yeah. So you're just watching all this as the life begins to light begins to glow all around him. His body starts to become untriveled, like inflaming like a wound, and the necrotic wounds begin to heal and disappear. Are there any boils? Everything seems to be back to normal, except one thing. The scar that was put on your forehead by the death knife from your uh, dream, your uh, door, mm -hmm. yeah. it's still there. I know he's become Harry Potter. I am Harry Potter. I am the dwarf that lived. Um, Doreg, you wake up and you see a very uh, three familiar faces. Uh, you see, uh, you see Orin. You see, you see Chunko, and you see the. Uh, Hold on a second, let me check your character sheet for a name. It is not a familiar face. <laughs> well, he does have a very light complexion. Yeah, uh, I, I did very sort of angelic look to him anyway. See, uh, you see, Syria, a strong word. The uh, night you were squired in there by your bedside. And you see two familiar faces you've not really met, but you're surprised to meet. Uh, one is the Grandmaster of the Knightly Order, who's standing right beside your bedside, hand on your shoulder. I'm and the shoulder. other in front of you, and the other is the uh, the. Uh, Head of the Knights of the Crown, uh, Lord Guilford. And uh, the commander, uh, Grant, I mean, the Grandmaster's name is uh, Leo the Lion Steelfist. Do I report to any of these guys? Uh, yeah, uh, you do report to the Grandmaster. Uh, everyone has to answer to the Grandmaster. The, uh, the Knight of the Crown, you know uh, from what Joanne told you, the head of the Knights of the Sword, uh, said that uh, he's occupying the cities currently because there's something's about to go down. You don't know what. But, and I'm um, feeling a little weak. I'm lying down in the bed, right? Right, right. You you just got recovered. You. You can feel your, uh, you can move your arms and legs and you can move your arm again. Um, I, um, but it still kind of hurts. I, yeah. I, I try to, I try to give the commander my, um, um, salute or whatever, my, um. Uh, yeah, for honor is my life. Yes. For honor is my life is the word and you put your, uh, hand, uh, or your fist over your chest where your heart would be. And uh, and he kind of holds you, and, and he looks at you and goes, "How are you feeling?" Uh, not so well. I um, I took on a death knight. I think it was a little more than I should have. Um, I should have taken on my own a little more. I could than I should have bitten. But but I showed him what who's boss. 
<laughs> His name is Lord Gomor. He's not one to be trifled with. He is Lord Soft, one of Lord Soft's lieutenants. I feel uh, you will be meeting him again. Oh, great. But we're in a city protected by the gods. You won't see you. So you are safe for now. Uh, Gormor or something like that? Yeah, Gormor or something like that. Well, like well, I, I hope to see him again because, well, well, I got a couple more fingers to show him. <laughs> Give me more, at least. <laughs> And Syria with a expression of uh, shock, going, "You almost died." Almost. <laughs> That's exactly what I tell her. Almost, <laughs> but not yeah. quite. And so this is uh, like a super beaten up okay. dwarf in the bed that's okay. just talking okay. massive shit. Mm -hmm. kind of wanted to do break the fourth wall he wasn't eaten by a sad word but I'm but, just uh, a bit the creature, creature being so Master Leo holds up his hand and uh, says um, I fear you all are in danger and now are threatened by the wrath of Saw well I fear that's a help another time Tell me, why do you travel downward south? Are you not aware of the situation? Oh, well, is he not? I guess he's not aware of our mission, then, eh? No, he's not. Uh, uh, Toby, for uh, information, they were sent on a private uh, mission by the heads of the Knights of the Rhodes to retrieve the Dragon Orb and bring it back. Okay. And it's which, um, uh, what you probably do know, that, yeah, this would probably be kind of public knowledge, but no one really talks about it in public, is that the heads of the order are trying to make a power play to become the Grand Master because they feel the current one is old and feeble. Okay. And this is the Grand Master? Yeah, this is the Grand Master. So and, he uh, would have, he would have authority over the Knights of the Rose, right? Yes, he would. And, he, and uh, Doring knows that this Dragon Orb was a power play to present as a way to for the uh, present the uh, Knights of Rose as the right choice for the against in this war for the to be the new Grand Master. But uh, you guys were given a warning by a wizard. Who doesn't follow the uh, robes of high sorcery named Thak? That that it would only bring disaster if he claimed it. Hmm. Us a but you don't know where this Gorsag. You just you're just sitting here going. <laughs> yeah, I'm just observing at the moment. This weird dynamic. Uh, I'm just like, so you know that Lord Guilford uh, is. Uh, just realized what the, where I got one of that name from. Uh, Guilford uh, is the head of the Knight of the Crown, and he's the youngest of the three, which is uh, you have Joanna of the Knights of Sword, who's you have, uh, I have his name written down. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, no, darn it. I really guess I'm, I'm moving my mouse over here. That's just getting ridiculous. All right, let's see. All right, and don't need to drag one. Uh, all right, uh, Lord Lamrick uh, Blazehelm is the head of the Knights of the Rose. But you guys also know that the Lord of the Marsh, uh, Aranis, the Black Dragon High Lord, is also looking for it. And with words echo and like this is all echoing for your minds, rushing for your minds that uh, 
that the uh, that uh, warning that that give you is a this item has many abilities and can give information that mortals were not meant to know. Ooh, information that mortals were not meant to know. If you think uh, that this question has been asked, that you've had premonitions from you don't know who. Each saw someone different. Uh, that will the whole crin will burn for it. But of course, again, you don't know any of this. No. I'm just like. Just hang with us for a second. Look at Omar, well, spared in public. Not. So, um. What about the other bad trainers? Are you going to tell all this to Grandmaster or. Are uh, you just going to say this to the Grandmaster or just everyone in the room? Oh, we trust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well, <laughs> this is a lot to take on at once, sort of. Yeah, I'm you're just good. like, uh, you're just like, what? Like, I don't even know you. <laughs> you should probably have no sensation back right now. Make a constitution saving pro, uh, uh, um, uh, Pete. One sec. Yeah, are there any big boils left on them? I'd kind of like to squeeze them and see if they pop. Uh, big what? Boils, pusses, blisters, you know. Oh, boils. Boils. So, yeah, make, make me waste my crit. <laughs> <laughs> I see how yeah, it is. Probably my only crit for the whole night. Yeah, you're just people. sitting there unamused, like, uh, like your cousin's doing this, and you're in a hospital. It's like, what the hell? Uh, or technically, what the abyss? Um, that's really not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Bullstag's getting uh, a bit uncomfortable at this point and is slowly moving away around the bed. Towards the more efficient <laughs> people. I'm just like, so yeah, are the people need this healing, you said? Part of my payment? Uh, you know, we, yes, you will behave. And, uh, I mean, you'll be paid, ah. But uh, uh, you see the uh, Lord Guilford just go, <laughs> I would like. To welcome you back. And uh, Dorig, those words that uh, Lord Lamarack told you that uh, that how green he was, the head of the Knights of Ground, and how a bunch of bundle of nerves he is, is starting to play back to you, and you're like, oh yeah, this guy is definitely the head of the Knights of Ground. Uh, so what's what's yeah. the, so you've you've been going all over all this stuff, all this background stuff, but wasn't the high commander asking me a question? Yeah, he's uh, he was uh, uh, which one, the grandmaster or the uh, knight grandmaster? Uh, yes, he goes. Why are you traveling so far south? Hmm. Because we hope to get to the North Pole that way. The um my 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 commander has given me an order to ride down south. Um, he has not told me um any future orders except for to go to a certain location and I will receive new orders. He just kind of looks at you and just goes. 
Oh, yes. Very well. So you're also aware that the southern continent, part of the, the southern part of the sea of the continent, has been seized by the Lord of the Marsh. Um, I, I was not aware of that, but um, if I do not follow my commander's orders, um, I will I will be um, greatly um, um, demoted and um, no longer be able to become a knight. So I would like to complete my orders. And he put the gentle hand on your uh, on your uh, uh, on your shoulder and goes, "Hush, hush, no, it's all right." I understand you have your orders. It is the duty of a knight to be loyal to their commander. But you know he has not taken completely the complete south, only certain areas. But I fear that he is marching towards Lord Barden, which you guys know is the home of the doors. And, and and yeah, any help you can provide us, intelligent or otherwise, um, would greatly um, um, it, ensure yeah, my success of my mission and uh, my longing health. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's not under siege yet. He has, uh, as I was continuing, I was going to tell you uh, that he sees part of the lower continent, but not all of it. And he also tells you that, strangely enough, he's not doing a campaign. It's almost as he's going from town to town looking for something. However, Peak. Remember that town you were raised in, uh, outside of Thor Barton? Mm hmm. That's well, but... under uh, occupation of the Lord of the Marsh. Uh oh. My mother, my Your sister, mom. my brothers. Oh no. Wait, do I have any family? <laughs> uh, you have a mother uh, that was uh, uh, cast out of the because uh, your father didn't want anything to do with you and your mother and you don't have any siblings but you have a cousin that took care of you um uh yeah I'll, i think um i think the only people that i know in that city are the um the majors majors yeah uh, yeah, they, uh, run the, uh, local inn at the, uh, uh, at the town, but, um. Were the Majirs yeah. uh, a, a relationship to me, or is that just another group, another family? Majirs are uh, the ones that kind of taught you how to fight growing but up. I'm not, I'm not related to them, right? Right, you're not related. Okay, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, my my trainers, my 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 mentors, they're they're in danger. Oh no. And um and I went on your, uh, all of you that you will have to pass this way to get where you're going. Good. I, I'd like to try out some new battle skills. <laughs> right. Right, but um, see my new hammer. It's an yeah. impressive hammer. Oh, it's big ball. But uh, he, the, the grandmaster, is sitting by uh, uh by uh Dorig as the uh. Uh, Lord Guilford and Sarah begin to leave, and as Lord Guilford says, "Come, we have business to do." And the Grandmaster just holds a hand and says, 
Dorg. You are our most promising squire. Thank I would you like to our work council meeting to observe in two days' time. What was that? He wants us to meet in two days' time, or it's time to go to the war council meeting. He wants okay. you to sit with all the uh, current leaders of the military forces in the area. Oh, Aren't I a little too low for that? Uh, no, you're just there as an observer. You're to learn, basically. Yeah, it's basically, think of it as like a part of your training. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You could help speed us on our way if you bring a platoon with us on this trip that we have to make. Ooh. So they all leave. Um, but of course, Dag. You notice something as Can you move to the other side of the bed. You notice something strange about uh, being a cleric uh, with a strong connection to your deity. Uh, you notice that uh, Orin, and you can tell by looking at him that he's had a severed connection with his deity. However, you know of a way to get his powers back as a cleric. Oh, really? Ooh. Yes, you do. The only way to uh, get your powers back is or to either A, try to restore that relationship with the deity, which isn't likely going to happen, or B, Star relationship with a new deity. Oh, interesting. And as being a cleric of the good, uh, being a cleric of the, uh, what was that? Of Mishako. Mishako? Mishako. Mishako. Uh, yeah, um, being a cleric of Mishikal and of the gods of light, you know that there's a god for just about every domain in the, in the gods of light, but you know that the deity for the nature domain, let me look it up real quick, uh, I think I passed it, yeah, I passed it. Habakkuk, the Big blue Habakkuk. phoenix. Blue phoenix. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Habakkuk, yeah. Yeah, the blue phoenix. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention the Grandmaster uh, also informed you guys that uh, he received uh, the recommendation from Joanna for uh, Doric to become a knight. But you need three recommendations, or at least, or you can gamble it all and take the trials. Which is, uh, but um, what was Joanna's last name? Uh, I think her last name. I think it was Joanna. What? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I think it was Strong Blade or something like that. But uh, yeah. So um. Now that your uh, companion's back and the cleric's here um, in the room standing awkwardly. Yeah, very sort of uh, taken aback by all of this. Yeah, because they just told you a whole bunch of stuff and you're just like, what? Yeah, basically. I have a uh, 
Well, I believe the truth there, am I? <laughs> So, uh, no. why are you looking at me like that, Miss oh, Holy Man? What's on your mind there? You. This may be forward. Oh. You seem to have lost connection with your deity. More like the deity spurned me and took it away, but yes. I've um, got a little bit of anger issues about this now. <laughs> well, there is a god for everyone, my friend. And if your god has spurned you, maybe the path of Tabaruk may be something you could entertain. Tabaruk? Is that it? Habakkuk? Habak yeah, Habakkuk. Habakkuk, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I can't pronounce it either. Uh, let's see. And your old deity was. Uh... I don't know if I even had that. Neutral hermit dwarf. Uh, Stilivin. Stivalin. Stivalin. Yeah. I think. But, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so you're. You're kind of perplexed in a way, because you don't understand the reasons why she abandoned you. But uh, this does present a new promise and opportunity. Uh, do you want to go and try this? I guess you have a temple nearby? Was there like a set of trials we have to do? I mean, do you want to know? Uh, I, I would say, yeah, a temple would know. There's... Uh, this is a city. There's a temple for each of the gods of light here, because it's been a few years. They they build up a reputation. Um, so you could go to the temple of Habakkuk to uh, um, uh, to get information how to uh, uh, to get your powers back. Let's see. I hear beeps in the background. Something like hidden messages. Hidden <laughs> uh, messages? Uh, <laughs> More of an intuition tells me that uh, Dwarag is uh, almost fit and ready to go. <laughs> I just, I just, I just need some, some um, medical um, um, comforting from Joanna. As you scream all this, all the people in the room just go, "Oh, oh not this again! Oh, I think my injuries are getting worse." <laughs> There's always one in every infirmary. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah uh, he uh form you uh that yeah they uh, uh you find your things uh, at the inside of your bed in the chest uh you guys uh, strap your armor and you go for town uh and which reminds me did you guys collect your money last time from the uh, Night of the Rose, the regular payment for each town you traveled on the way? I don't know. How much was it? I think it was like 400 or something like that. So, maybe, maybe. so far, the entire mission, I've gotten a little over 300, I think. Yeah. How'd you get that much? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Did all the suits leave? I didn't get my money. I didn't you didn't get me. your money. My money. <laughs> uh, you're paid at the end of the door. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, you uh, get your money, and uh, you all you show them the way to the Temple of Habakkuk, and uh, or the Blue Phoenix. How much money is there? 
Any dessert? Aaron, how much money does Aaron have? Oh, oh wow. So you think we'll be sitting at about 300? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I did. I spent guys. my three hundred on oh, uh, barding for my horse, so I have thirty-one gold or thirty-eight gold. Uh -huh. Is that Michael cooking? Yeah, his fire alarm went off. Yeah, it looks like it. Damn, his head's uh, burning with all the. <laughs> all right. So I'm at 142, but I don't know how it got there. So I got two pushes of healing. That might do it. Yeah. That probably doesn't. Isn't each potion of healing like 100 gold? I thought it was 50. 50. Could be 50. 50. Yeah. But okay. So that's 100. <laughs> Michael's all muted. Well, yeah, he, he's got to be muted. He's, if his fire alarm's going off, he's... Yeah, I'm just surprised he's still sitting at his computer and not checking on what's going on. Is, is yeah. he? I, I wasn't watching his video. I'm... I don't know. <laughs> so when we start seeing the flames in the background, then we're like, hey, Michael. Michael. <laughs> Might want to make sure it's not really a fire. Right? Yeah. Make sure your house isn't burning down. <laughs> um, is there anything else you may have bought? Like a new weapon or something? Mm, well. Well, I did get them all, but that was only 10 gold pieces. I don't know. So you probably forgot to get 100 from the okay. last run. All right, I'll correct it. Yeah. One the is simply legal. Right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need it. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I'm back. <laughs> what can I spend that on? Uh... Four healing potions. Kachin. Okay, uh, you guys travel to the. Uh, it, unless you want to spend any time in the shops, and my ears are ringing. Um, oh, yeah. What? <laughs> uh, and my ears are ringing. Uh, but uh, if you guys want to travel to any shops along the way uh, to the temple, you can. But can I grab yeah, two I more potions? Been... Of four potions of healing. Do you have enough for four potions of healing? Well, two more, yeah. Two more, okay. Okay, they're fifty each. Unless they're unless they're more dragon rods like Barovia. Okay. So you uh, buy your potions and you arrive to a temple with uh, uh, priests uh, in uh, blue robes and made of leaves, blue leaves. Leaves. Uh, you see a bunch of. Uh, Kaganesti elves, which are, are uh, Toby, are wood elves in oh. this world. Uh, so you and traveling in, uh, you see the occasional uh, different races come in. Uh, it's a huge temple. Uh, you know something very strange about it. Uh, there's a huge opening in the ceiling. Uh, yep. At the top of the temple, of a huge uh, statue and pillar that uh, says, uh, Bless the Blue Phoenix. And you see a bunch of clerics, and you see a, a uh, an older man, uh, wild hair, gray beard, uh, just standing in front of the statue. I see. 
very elaborate uh, robes made with twigs and uh, uh, leaves and stuff like that. I'm a bit of more of an earth enthusiast, you know. Are you sure this is the right way to go? I mean, I'm I twisting. If you look to the nature, right. this is the right place. If you feel a strong connection with nature, this is the right place for you. Oh, okay. It's a little woody. Twiggy. I don't know. It might branch off to the other uh, studies, you see. Ask some questions, speak to one of the clerics, they'll have more information. This isn't my deity, I don't know the most about them. Oh, okay. That... Uh, you would know uh, that the Blue Phoenix is a uh, child of Paladine and Michiko. Okay. Mm. Well, the uh, DDs have uh, some have children with other DDs, and a lot of things are born, sometimes gods or sometimes something else entirely. Um, uh, uh, Orin, do you uh, go to one of the clerics? What? Do you go to one of the clerics? Well, he looks rather regal in his twigs and stuff. I was wondering if there was an acolyte who could uh, introduce me first. Okay. Uh, they uh, they take you to the uh, high cleric. Well, that was fast. And they okay. introduce him as... Forum. And... Uh, High cleric forum and uh, introduces himself and goes, How may I help you? Well, I used to be a caretaker of the earth, a friend of the animals, but my deity has abandoned me. And I, He's kind of shrugging his beard as I'm saying this. I think it's because I have turned away from the animals to help the mankind and dwarves and elves now. And the deity, my deity no longer thinks I'm being impartial. I hear you are aligned with the forces of Paladine, in a way. Child of Paladine? I don't know. I'm new to this, uh, new to the civilized world, you see. Sure comes in many forms, but but you see, we do want see. to know what's oh. there. <laughs> yep, that's what Junko what Junko said. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh... He notes that uh, Habakkuk and is always, he, he goes on and he talks about the mythology of Habakkuk, who's always at war with the evil nature god, uh, Zimboi, hmm. the goddess of sea and storms. But, uh, but Habakkuk is wow. the. And he, he notes that. Uh, that he notes that um, it's not up to I. Understood. You are. To, to form a bond with Habakkuk. But it's your choice. Are you willing to serve? That's all I have to do. Just one day I'm serving this guy, and next day I'm serving this guy. Next. No trials, no tribulations, nothing like that. <laughs> if you're willing to serve, I know of a man, a druid, mm. that can do what you require. He hangs outside of the city in the forest. What, a druid in the forest? Small woods, in the small woods. 
You will know him by his mask. By his what? Mask? Yes, mask. You know, like a big old twig thing? Or will it be like... Uh, he, he does note that he will be in... Uh, He'll resemble that of a Caganesi elf. Uh, he will be covered in uh, war paint or, or tribal paint, paint and be in the woods wielding a staff and uh, he points you to him if you really want your powers back and Sir Habakkuk, he can help you. Those are good. Still kind of neutral, you know. I'm not entirely good. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to try something. I have this Nino, you, uh, <laughs> Nino, you well, hearts can change. Mm. All right, fair enough. But um, how far away from the city is he? Not far. He's in the woods nearby. He travels near and far. <laughs> he sits there waiting for something, expecting something to arrive. All right. Well, what do you what do you gonna say? You wanna go on a little side adventure? Otherwise, I can swing a big heavy mall around for a while and see how that works. So, is there anything else we need to know before we go trumpsing over there? Are the elves friendly or kind of antagonistic or anything? Or? No, only that he will. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, they're, well, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're also called wilder elves because, uh, they're very tribal. Hmm. Was that an elf you were venturing with way back in the beginning? Uh, I think he, uh, uh, the, uh, they're, they're very tribal, they're, yeah, I guess they're more easygoing, but yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, Gold was the previous party member who uh, the, the player sadly left. Um, but um, so you. Uh, so now you have this uh, pointed direction of where to go. Do you guys, what do you want to do with uh, Gorstag? And Gorstag, what do you want to do? Gorstag's interested to observe and to tag along if the Dwarven Party will allow it. If this give is us... interesting from a religious perspective. Give us a quick pick me up when uh, the ghost drains us of life. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Well, you... Not all about it. How often do you get hurt this badly? What? How often do you get hurt this badly? <laughs> Seems what was the last three times so okay. soon after saving you. I think I'll tag along for a bit. Okay. I'll keep an eye on you. Hmm. Let's see. Touch up the healing as it needs to go. So you guys uh, travel through the city, and you walk through the woods uh, through uh, what for most of the day went until at night, and then you come across a uh, a, a druid in a blue phoenix mask. Looks definitely just. Good. They're uh, meditating, and then you, as you walk, approach him. You hear him say, "I've been expecting you, Lord." Okay. Word travels fast in these parts. Are you looking for the? Uh, turn of your powers, or are you looking for the answers to what lies beneath the ruins of truth? 
Ooh. Let's go for door number two. <laughs> a little both, actually, yes. I don't want to know what lies beneath the ruins of truth yet. I would kind of like to get back in touch with the earth. But it does seem to be threatening on my family and all my clan. So something needs to be done about it. What do you propose? If you have any questions, I can give you answers. But you must prove worthy of Habakkuk. In another plane, the Zimboy has affected some of the nature spirits. Follow the white stag and uh, dispose of the and cleanse the, dispose and cleanse the spirits. And I will show you how to get your powers back. But as for the moment, and he kind of uh, gets takes out a bowl and mixes these herbs and he puts a thumb on your forehead and he puts a little pattern and strangely enough he gets up and walks and beckons you to follow hmm. you follow what do you say guys shall we follow I'll be here or does it only want me alone? Is this like a Jedi from a trial? He uh, he passes. He shows these uh, trees connected, and he touches them, and a golden light portal opens. <laughs> and he walks in, and disappears. Do you walk into the portal? Sure. You guys are going to, if you want, you can walk in after me, uh, but you may want to wait before walking with me. All right, fine. <laughs> Being shoved into the portal. Oh, so you had all, uh, you all are uh, shoved into the portal. And you <laughs> pop up here. That was sad. It's really not boring. The mark that was put on your forehead begins to glow. Orin or me? You have been given temporarily the use of your dramatic powers. But you all four just realize where you are. You've probably read some books on it. Uh, you, Chunko, and Gorstag read books about it. You in the Holy Temple, uh, Chunko in the libraries of the Tower of High Sorcery, uh, Dore, the library of the Knights of Slanthus, or and you probably heard stories of this place. Rocks told me. Yeah. In the middle of the night, the little stones whispered in my ear. You are in the Feywild. Hmm. Hey. Yep. <laughs> the, the way the Feywild works is everything's like all the, your emotions are sp spurring out your everything's sporadic everything's out of control you're like walking but since you're buying nature magic from this uh, plane or in you get a few new bonuses and abilities and maybe some consequences and here's the fun part. You get to thank the I got shout out to the Naraki community for helping me with this. But uh, basically, any damage you deal with a spell, you double the dice. Mm. Every healing spell you do, double the dice. Any modifiers to add bonuses, double it. Now for the downside. We have a 
Let me turn on light real quick. Got a white stack in this one. My foot's stuck. All right. <laughs> Right. And we watch as Michael Burns. All right. Yeah. What we have here I still don't know where he lives. Oh. is the Druidic Wild Search Magic Table. So here's how it works. Yeah, the Druidic Wild Search Magic Table. Say thanks to the Neurarchy community for this. I tweaked some of their ideas, but I love their ideas. Uh, basically, how, here's how it works. On an attack roll, when you use a spell, you roll a 10 or lower, it triggers the wild search table. If, you, if they succeed on a saving throw, an enemy succeeds on a saving throw, it triggers the wild search table. If you go five turns without using a spell, in battle, it automatically triggers the wild search table. <laughs> now, these can range from silly to bad. Enjoy. <laughs> well, I'll see you in the Nine Hells, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Is this all spellcasters? No, just Jody's oh, character. <laughs> <laughs> And there's six effects, so d don't worry. I'm sad. I want to trigger trigger a wild search table myself. That's the white stag, yo. I think. <laughs> yes, uh, you see the uh, white stag in the uh, top corner uh, as it passes through, and. Uh, this brown thing we're around is that a uh, bushes or actually, is it a cavern? Uh, Dorig, Dorig, uh, you know, being uh, a sir, a uh, worshiper of Paladine, that the white stag is a messenger of Paladine. Just fun fact, but whatever. Uh, as you uh, ha begins to pass through and you follow it. You see some corrupted animal spirits of beasts come forward from the woods. You see, uh, let's see, let's see. What's so we're trying to protect the stag. Is that what they said again, or are we trying to run it down the stag to the corrupted spirits? Okay. So you, I like my idea of uh, track it down and kill it, but. Me, Hmm. There they are. Patronus, yeah, right. Oh, you guys are right. Your the, uh, yeah, we're going four wolves, uh, wolves, spirits in the shape of four wolves, and uh, and a spirit in the shape of a winter wolf. We're doing breaks in this at all? Now remember, when you do a damage spell, you double the dice. But remember what I said about the effects. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everybody roll it. You still didn't say anything. I didn't? Oh. And then just click on initiative. But as I said, he didn't say anything about it. Are we are not doing a break or anything in the middle of this, or oh, a break. Uh, I, I don't know. Do like a video break or whatever, five minute break in the game or whatever, to go do things and come back. Yeah, but we had to split the video in two. Part A, Part B. But yeah, we can in a break if you want. We just have to pause it. Okay. Okay.
Every time we get a little smoke break.